Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma and Brian E. Roach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground Podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and rejoining me here is my good friend, buddy, colleague, and co-host, the one Mr. Brian E. Roach. Brian, you got a little bit of a, you got a haircut there, my friend. What's going on? No, it's just that same haircut. I've been well, having this. I just, you know, I wear a hat. It looks fresh and clean, though, right now, is what I'm well, saying. Yeah, it, it is. I, yeah, I, cut, I cut the sides down. I put my little sh- – I got my shaver out. Yeah, well, I mean, it's all done up. I mean, it's uh, – you're, you're looking dapper, my friend. You're looking uh, – I don't want to say you know, we want to look lit because then it's like maybe you have to stop, drop, and roll. And there might have been some people who got in trouble like that with the Steelers game yesterday. Oh, man. Um, you know what? This isn't going to be, I think, our usual uh, breakdown. Because it just can't be. I'll tell you why. For okay. the, I was already checked out in the third quarter. <laughs> I'm just like, I was resigned to the fate. I wasn't sure how we were going to have anything to talk about. Uh, really, any highlights to put on, even on the website, anything The with this game. It was just kind of like, man, this is a fuel effort. I, I didn't have the highest of expectations going in. Well, one of my more uh, somber podcasts, even from a pre- preview standpoint, the only thing that I was uh, I was looking forward to was maybe Najee Harris get 100 yards and the run game get going, but that's kind of impossible to do when you're down two scores the entire game for the most part. So I, I don't know how they ever get that going. Uh, that'll be my – aside from getting a loss, uh, going on the road, we know we weren't sure if Ben was going to play – we know that Ben hasn't been good on the West Coast as they uh, had a graphic popping up. But, um, yeah, my other disappointment here, I think, was the running game. 12 uh, carries, 39 yards for Najee Harris, although I think he does top with uh, – no, he didn't, not even with the receiving. He only had 5 for 20. There was some stat, though. He's uh, like 1,000 scrimmage yards um, yeah. uh, for the season. So, anyways um, – Trying to think about my initial impressions here. I guess the very first one off the top of my head is not only I could understand about 90% of the fans out there, they finally get to watch one game this year and it's on prime time and they don't understand who's out there on the field actually playing. And uh, the worst part is, is a lot of the sports media that didn't pay attention. I mean, Chris Collinsworth was just about spot on with everything he said last night, which is I don't want to say rare for him. I tend to like him a little better than some of the other analysts out there. Sometimes he's off his rocker. But there are people who just did not pay any attention, and I have to say this myself. There were guys running out on the field, and I'm like, who the heck is 61? Who Who's wearing 50 now? Uh, number eight, and we've seen Carl Joseph this year. He stole Melvin Ingram's number after Ingram left, uh, you know, yep. going from practice squad to active roster and back and forth or whatever. Uh, th- this was like almost like a no name defense and not in a good way. Um, let me, let me, I'm taking my pause here because I'm trying to debate how do I say I want to punch Chris Collingsworth right in the face? Um, <laughs> Which is understandable he's taken, still. He's taken over from the the uh, M squared guy that I don't like after last night. No. Where I'm just fed up. It was awful. Uh, in my mind, it was awful. Um, it, 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 here's why it's awful. I'm just tired of his nose being planted firmly up the keister of whichever quarterback is opposing the Steelers and constantly touting all of the greatness that is that person. Then looking for every potential flaw – that he can find, and what what finally sunk it in for me is is the the cat, the touchdown pass the, in the back corner of the end zone. Deontay pulls it in, and you hear Collinsworth go, "I don't know, was that ball moving a little bit?" No, shut up, give me a board. I'm going to put you out of your misery. Uh, <laughs> I, I just I can't take it. Now that as far as stating facts, in many cases I agree with you. He is not as bad as many others. He he gets at least for the most part, gets his stats right. Uh, but his his unfiltered bias 
and uh, is is too much for me to take sometimes. Oh anyway. man, I don't know. Anyway. I, I don't I don't share it quite so much. I thought like his comments, especially. I thought this was a little overbearing, only because I didn't think it was true. And he was talking about, hey, you can't you can't kill the Steelers. And I was like, man, I don't know this year's team. <laughs> like. You could bury them twelve feet under, even more than six feet. They they're not coming well, back up. But hey. let, let's put let's put it this way. Um, I I went into the game not sure what to expect. Um, I didn't know how they were going to stop the Chargers' offense uh, with the with the team that was playing. Right? Yes. Um, there were just too many cogs, and too many missing pieces. Uh, and I just didn't know what it was going to look like. It was not, uh, as I'd like to say, it was what I expected, but it was probably worse than I expected for a while. Um, I will give the group some credit, though, in that they they did not give up. Uh, you know, they this the t- this team had heart through the whole thing. There's no question about that. They they played. Um, you know, the OGGAM, you know, Cam, Cam gave every last bit of his grown ass man this during that day. That's uh, there's no question about it. They had the opportunities to come back. In there. Um, and, and what th- they even had the opportunity to win. They got the ball back. I mean, I, you know, I don't know how far we want to go into this, but they had the opportunities to win. And the things that let them down during the first half of the game were not what really ended up costing them the game. Um, yes, this was a ragtaggle defense that I don't hope we ever see again. <laughs> 533 yards, Brian. Wow. Um, okay, let's go over that for just a second because – I think a lot of the venom I'm seeing, and I've got quite a bit on some of the other things you said, but we'll circle around here. We will hit some points here on this from the game. Uh, One of the things I really see out there last night, this morning, is some real whining and complaining sense of entitlement from Steelers Nation. Oh, the standard is the standard. Tomlin, no losing seasons. Oh, is this what it is? And this is... I, there was a guy who was telling me, well, you tell me. And then I did, and he goes, well, I wasn't really debating this. I'm like, well, then why did you ask me? And I see these things online, and I got to put some of these fires out because there's probably people listening that may actually read something like that and think, oh, yeah, well, this idiot's actually right. No, he's not uh, with some of these folks. Look, the Steelers' defensive line – is down two players. However, you want to think that. Well, they've been without two at the whole year. They, they yeah. were planning on having to it as a starter. So and Tyson and, Alulu, yep. And Tyson Alulu is hurt. So that means you have backups in to begin with. Then those backups are also hurt. Carlos Davis has been hurt. Isaiah Loudermilk was out for this game, who had been playing very well, and he is part of a group of rookies who when you usually draft rookies, you have a few guys that are sitting there lying in wait. You don't know if they're good, bad, or otherwise until you get them on the field, and that's usually a good thing. In this draft class, Kevin Colbert had to – how many guys have been playing significant time? Damn near all of them except for Buddy Johnson, right? And then the the other guy that didn't make the team at all, uh, Quincy (laughs) Roche. So – you have Najee Harris, you have Pat Fryermuth, you have Kendrick Green, you have Dan Moore Jr., uh, you have Isaiah Loudermilk, you have Trey Norwood, and you have Presley Harvin the third. They're all playing right now. When other guys are getting hurt and they're already playing, where are you finding these bodies? The guys I was talking about, I don't even I'm not even gonna look. Fifty and sixty one, you had uh, somebody play in defensive line, um uh, it's gonna bug me, so I will have to look. A, there was um, uh, uh, Carl Joseph, who I'd actually even completely forgot about mentioning in the pregame because I wasn't thinking about him because he was on the practice squad. Taco Charlton, who joined the team about a month ago, is playing in a certain spots. Some of the people were talking, and they said, well, it's the next man up. There's only so many next men up that you get. They're knocking them down like toy soldiers. Uh, same thing at guard, too, when you had Kevin Dotson out and then um, – 
what's his name filling in for him ends up get JC Hassenauer gets hurt, Joe Haig gets in there. So when you're down and you're not just down, somebody was like, well, it'd be a little less noticeable. And I think they were trying to say this as a slight to Terrell Edmonds or Devin Bush, a little less noticeable if those guys are off the field. That, that would still be an impact, but the difference here is TJ Watt is a perennial defensive player of the year. When he comes off the field in 12 and a half sacks in a season, that is a major component. Just look in, look at Boza. If Boza wouldn't have ended up playing, he ends up being a major factor at the end of this game for the Chargers. Micah Fitzpatrick, who is not going to argue. God bless you there, Brian. <laughs> I think he got muted there. So I got the Alex sneezing. Oh, man. <laughs> it's that time of the year, man. It, it absolutely kills me. You could see it like in my face sometimes. So you have Minka Fitzpatrick, who none of us are going to argue, including Chris Collinsworth, that if he's playing more than likely that game winning touchdown pass with Mike Williams doesn't does not, happen. Doesn't happen. Instead, what? You got Trey Norwood and whoever else trying to slide in there. Joe Hayden not being on the field multiple time pro bowler. Uh Akella Witherspoon, don't think he's gotten the concept yet. <laughs> he looked like he was targeted a few times, but who wasn't with this defense? They couldn't uh whenever they did sniff Justin Herbert. He was able to squeak out, and then there was nothing but open field for him to run. He leads everyone in this game, including his own team, with 90 uh, rushing yards. Just um, some of it is just that it was just brutal in that sense, and it was unfortunate. And through three quarters, the Steelers were trailing by 17 points. And I'm like, just get this over with. Halftime was done at 9:30 Eastern time. I'm like, I might get to bed at a decent hour tonight. That that didn't end up happening. That dragged out, and instead, with my near coronary from their comeback, <laughs> coming back, who thought that the Steelers' offense was going to put up the most points they had all year, cross thirty points for the first time all year, and in the fourth quarter, come back not only from a seventeen-point deficit but actually take a lead. So yeah. I couldn't I couldn't sleep. I was all wound up after all of that. Unfortunately. Like, unlike the other games in the AFC North, particularly Cleveland and Baltimore, you don't watch those games with bated breath and thinking, well, those teams are going to definitely lose because the Lions, with their awful play calling, sunk themselves as per the usual. And the Ravens found a way with the Bears actually found a way to lose, too. I'll say that much. I mean, the Ravens found it, but the Bears, man, that they absolutely tank it. And it was kind of the same collapse that we saw here with the Steelers unfortunately at the very tail end so maybe just maybe well we've mentioned a couple of grown ass performances before I get into a few of the plays or series Brian you already mentioned Cam Hayward I'm going to mention the other Cam because he definitely deserves it too Cam Sutton made a number of great plays out there including getting up underneath that uh, one interception uh, yeah. Very crucial turnover. I'm going to throw another guy in that category wearing 28 that some people may not have noticed. Miles Killebrew for the block. Huge. I wish, I wish they could have just scooped that and took it right into the end zone. Yep. Right there. <laughs> would have been uh, nice. That would have been very nice. Let's see who else we've got. On the offensive side of the ball, you definitely got to put in Ben Roethlisberger in this category, having not practiced, having come, whatever his I, ailment. And I got to I gotta go pause right you there. I got to right pause ahead. you on Ben. You know, all year long, Ben is watched. Ben is horrible. Ben is the worst. Ben is not Ben from 10 years ago. Ben is not Ben from five years ago. But Ben is not watched. You're not watched if you put up – I mean, you just aren't. There were balls that were vintage Ben thrown in this game. The the dime, the freaking dime to Deontay Johnson on the sideline. That ball was beyond accurately placed. The touchdown to Deontay Johnson. He threw a couple of lasers at some point. His Yes. Did he underthrow Chase Claypool? Yes. So do a lot of people. It's not, this is, again, I can't say this loud enough. This is not Peyton Manning's noodle arm. <laughs> well, wait a minute. You said so do other people. And I really wanted to point out there that if Mason Rudolph was doing this same stuff in this game this morning, we'd be talking about how Mason Rudolph lost this game. I just want to put that out there, too. There, there's still misfires, regardless. There's balls that went behind. 
or over. He's not perfect. He's not. No one is. No one is perfect. But if you needed more evidence that they'd have won that that Lions game if Ben played, watch this game. Sorry. That's just – that is just the case. He's better than Mason Rudolph. No, He's I mean, I'm not, than, I've, never, I've never argued that. that, that that's, yeah. that that's something that I've never argued. The, the point was and, and is that I thought Mason – I'm not all that on Mason. I know. You didn't get your chance to put all that in. I didn't. I didn't. After. I'm not going to put it all on Mason, but he sucks, and I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> he did enough. And, he did enough. And Ben could only do so much here, too. I was ripping on my cousin who turned into the mob during the middle of the week. We left that game. He didn't have a problem with Mason Rudolph. Then he listened to everybody on the radio. Notably, last week I was picking on Stan Saverin, who I refused to listen to uh, post-game this time around because it's it's been everybody's been negative Nelly and Nancy out there. And this team, I oh. think a lot of people, well, they're trying to put a fork in this team from the from the jump. At the I know, the but season. let's be fair. When you lose, when you tie an 0 and 18. Coming off a of bye, matter. playing in crap weather but with it, a bunch of players it doesn't getting matter. hurt in the middle of the game and a backup and, quarterback. I'm, <sighs> this is, it's not, I'm not saying they're yeah. justified or correct. I'm saying human nature. Your team just tied a team that hasn't won a game all year. Didn't look very good doing it. And you've already been unhappy because, let's be frank, they haven't looked good most of the year. Yes. Yes, I understand the negative. But if you want to take the silver lining from within this, once the thread of things that we've said all year long, they will get better. This team put up, what, more than 24 points in the fourth quarter? <laughs> I'm still speechless to that, by the way. I, I have no there, idea. This was a much a better looking offense than it's looked all year long. Can Dude, I promise you 20, it's going to be that way every year? 27, every no. 27 in the fourth quarter, which is more than they put up in all but one other game, entire game, the entire year. Like, And they moved the ball throughout this game fairly consistently. They had one dud of a drive, but for the most part, they were able to move the ball. Yes, Aditi. Yes, Chris Collingsworth, they didn't run the ball very well. But as you said, when you're down two touchdowns, you can't run all the time. But secondarily, you're on your third freaking guard. <laughs> and backup running backs, by the way. Yeah. I think they kind of missed that you you got to give Najee a break uh, at some point. And, and when you do, <laughs> and then he gets hurt. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Those refs. Those refs. Oh, my God. I didn't have the biggest complaint with them yesterday, but there are spots. Except for those two blatant. No. It blows to the head. Blatant yeah. blows to the head. You're going to tell me, you morons. <laughs> you can't see that forearm to the jaw. You couldn't see his head rock back. I don't give a crap if he's a, a running back. Yes, I'm, I'm annoyed. I almost said the other word. <laughs> you i don't care if he's a running back and you're going to give him less protection he just caught a ball turned to make a move got tripped and then got elbowed in the head purposefully forearm shivered to the head and yes. you don't see that turn in your badge you you take your zebra pants off run around in your underwear get out of this field i don't care you stink you stink and then the other one cam sutton is lucky he's not unconscious or seriously injured. Yes. Because that moron, 300-pound goon, put full force weight in a downward push towards his head. Both those guys should get monstrous fines, maybe even worse. I don't know. They Do were you, awful. You see, you see all the noise about Cam Hayward and throwing punches and a fine and – and uh, like now they're talking even maybe perhaps suspension. I'm like over like or what? What? Uh, what he because tackled he Herbert? His, he moves his arm down to get footage to stand up. Yeah, I, I don't know. Just, I, I mean, I looked at it three times. Yeah, it looks a little hinky. Looks like he's trying to punch the guy in the nuts. But I don't know that that's the case. I have to watch it several more times before I'm going uh, to look on our on our own show too. I understand there's going to be somebody that's going to be like, "Oh man, you're just looking through this through Steelers colored glasses." Yeah, for some part, but you know, Ben got teabagged by the one guy, and the flag gets pulled, 
and now you're trying to tell us, you know, they throw a flag here and this is going to be a fine. There was nothing to happen from that. That's exactly where we have a problem with this stuff. I have a problem with the James Pierre pass interference call as well. That one, I felt like they were right at the line and they're just, I, I didn't, they're fighting didn't at each other. You didn't? It well, was, what about it was, the one well, they picked why. up with Deontay, though? It's great. It's a great chuck move and, and, and fighting, but then the arm goes around. Uh, the arm I, I goes mean, around yeah, the okay. back, and there's a little grab. So it's like, was it, was it, eh, eh, eh? Yeah, it was kind of, eh. The other one, the one you're talking about, no. You guys are stupid. He's trying to fight back to get to where that ball's going to be. You don't know if it's uncatchable at that point. He's being held the entire way. So even if you pick the flag up on pass interference, it's called holding, you that. moron. That was my problem with it. He was <laughs> held. And I, I have a problem with the holding and pass interference in general. Um, I, I'm waiting for somebody. Nobody I, I thought that I saw said it, but I was thinking it at the time with the Chase Claypool on fourth down where he gets absolutely mugged. And then somebody's gonna be like, "Oh, the refs are helping the Steelers again," and it's like, "Well, that was very mer- that was well merited." But I have a problem with like kind of almost like the basketball hand check stuff here, or you're it's like somebody's passing through and you still keep like a hand on them, and all of a sudden that's that's a hold or something. For the most part, though, I have to say, outside of the headshots, the officiating in this game is some of the better officiating that we've seen all year. There was less for me to complain about because I thought of a lot the of lo- holding that wasn't called. A lot there, of holding uh, on Alex Highsmith, especially uh, yeah, that wasn't you, called. Again, those I know are the it's ones always going to be that difficulty way. with. Um, and, and but at least called on the other side. At least that's that. That's where I'm yes. getting. At yes. least it didn't get called on both sides. Um, but I, I, I'm so incensed by the two headshots, right? That I cannot. I, I have difficulty getting past that. Yes. If I take those two things out of the equation. Um, then I, I would almost be willing. Well, okay, I'll, I'll be kind. I'm willing to agree with you. <laughs> this may be one of the better officiated games overall, not because they were good, because they stink, but because at least for the most part, and oh, I, I how much I hate the fact that I think Chris Collingsworth agreed with me in saying at some point during the game, all you ask of them, is that they be consistent in their calls. As long as you are, I will complain less. But here's the big inconsistency. Cam's little touch to the wee-wee area of uh, J- Justin Herbert is a flag. Two headshots. No, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's just football. <laughs> yeah. You hit the nail on the head. Not to beat the dead horse anymore. To circle back around, we have one more grown-ass man that we do have to give out, and you mentioned him multiple times during this, and that's why he should be acknowledged formally here. Deontay Johnson had a hell of a game. Chase Claypool showed up, uh, but I'm just going to say I only got one wide receiver award this week, and that's just by virtue of the way the game is. I want to jump back to this defense stuff before we pick out a few more plays, including we have to talk about fourth down with the Steelers early on as well and whether they should have went for some points otherwise. Um, just off the leg of Boswell it would not have made the difference in this game, but maybe paired up somewhere else it would have. But the defense, the reason the defense is so bad uh, at, at points is you, you do, you have guys off the street. I was having this argument. I, you have a 53 man roster. They're not all active on game days. What is it? 46, 48, something is somewhere in there. And then um, I always forget. Cause then you could bring guys up and all these other things. But uh Regardless of that, you have 11 starters on each side of the ball. It's 22 players and three specialists. That's 25 out of 53, not including the guys you're going to have in active. How many people does that leave for you left that you can cycle in? How many backups can you have at each of roughly 8 to 10 positions? That's a, assuming some guys are position flexible, defensive, offensive line, and in your secondary. So it just, it, it does. It, it drives me crazy that everybody's like, oh, here's your standard is the standard. Like they're throwing some barbs at you. Go follow another team. And then you'll find out that there is no standards whatsoever in some places, such as the New York Jets. So 
I mean, oh, no. let's let's be fair. The standard is the standard in the New York Jets. The standard is just <laughs> it's just very low. Yes. It's just terrible. <laughs> let's, let's look at some of the guys here that got that logged some time. Trey Norwood played an entire game for the first time this season. I'm not sure he's had more than 30 snaps. I don't have the full log in front of me. Terrell Edmonds, another full participant. Uh, participant. Cam Sutton came off the field for a play. James Pierre nearly played the entire game as well. You have Alex Highsmith with 64 of the 76 defensive snaps. It's good for 84% along with Joe Schobert shortly behind him and Cam Hayward. These guys do get substituted. They do have to come off the field. Devin Bush. Um, Devin Bush in position sometimes and then not. It's still guys not getting off blocks. Joe Schobert We'll get back to that. Another fourth down decision that actually put the Steelers in a, in a nice position later. We'll skim over the plays. I can't do them all. I just can't. A lot of it's brutal. But this is where it starts to go a little more south here, Brian. I mean, Chris Wormley has been having a hell of a year. He was meant to be a reserve player to begin with. He plays 57 uh, uh, snaps, 75% of all of the defensive plays. Now you're getting into Taco Charlton playing 49 plays, 64% of the game. He wasn't with this team a month ago. This is a guy yeah. they pulled off the street for depth. Also blame selfish Melvin Ingram for all of this. And, and you could probably say, well, the Steelers could have held a gun to his head and kept him there. How's that going to work for you? It's probably not. Uh, let's see. Derek Tuska also rotating in as an outside linebacker here. I want to say Taco was kind of floating a little bit. I did see him kind of lined up a little more. As a as an actual defensive end or defensive tackle, and there were there were a couple of there were a couple of uh, really ugly moments with Taco Charles trying to cover guys, really not good. But <laughs> you don't want him out there for forty nine plays. I think if no. he's out there for fifteen to twenty, and particularly if he's up against the run, uh, he hasn't been all that bad. But Again, this isn't TJ Watt that's out there. You're not going from Watt to High. You're not going from Watt to Dupree or Dupree to Highsmith or to right. Melvin Ingram. You're go you're falling completely off the charts to create a player mode if you're playing the John Madden football games, okay? And you're starting out. You're not getting any points to upgrade these guys. <laughs> like they're just what they are. Uh, yep. Tuska, 42 percent. I'll just do forty two percent, so you get a little more. Uh, Arthur Mallette. Uh, he gets hurt in this game, I believe. 38%. Isaiah Bugs, 37. Henry Mondo, 36. We're already talking about Tuska wasn't here. Mondo was a practice player. Akella Weatherspoon wasn't here for training camp. He plays 26% of the game. Carl Joseph, likewise, not here during training camp and a practice squad player, 20% of the game. Robert Spillane, 17. Uh, is it Daniel Archibong? Uh, let me see. I, I had actually I brought him up. Daniel Archibong and Delonte Scott play 11 and 9%, 8 and 7 snaps. Miles Killebrew gets one snap in this game as well. So we did have the snap counts at least. We're running through this. But just look at that whole bottom half of the defense. There's a whole bunch of guys that like we weren't talking about as part of this process. Why didn't they sign better people during free agency? Did you forget they didn't have cap room? <laughs> it's a miracle they have some of the guys that they have trading for Joe Schobert and otherwise. So some of them not working out like Akella Witherspoon. Let's look at some of the game, Brian. The Steelers lose the coin toss, end up getting the ball first, and they actually go on the board. Problem is they get down into this red zone. They're five yards out. And they still, this is what happens. Second and 10 is uh, actually first and 10. Pass, pass, defensive offsides, replay second down, move them half the distance shorter. Pass, pass, field goal attempt. Rough, rough way to start. 13 plays, 57 yards, 631. Half of the quarter almost off the clock there. Uh, then the Steelers defense gives up a huge drive and practically go right into the second quarter. 12 play 73 yards, six minutes, 20 seconds for the LA chargers Steelers get the ball back. And this is where they get down to the chargers two or actually down to the five. Let's start there. So this is off of a 37 yard pass. The underthrown pass to chase Claypool. This is why I mentioned quarterback agnostic here, whether this is, 
if this is Mason Rudolph, does he lead him too much maybe? And it's an incomplete pass. Dwayne Haskins, same deal. So, it, you know, I, you can't say. Maybe he didn't even think he was going to be that wide open. Nobody thought he was going to be that wide open. Yeah. <laughs> And I think that's what happens. I think that's exactly what happens sometimes in, in these instances. You have, always hear the phrase, he, you wish, he wishes he could have that back. Yeah. You hear that a lot Absolutely. in games, and that's why. Uh, you're, you're guess, At least he didn't guessing. miss him. He didn't miss him, Yes, right? That's the way I look at it. You know, look, what's more frustrating is when Ben launches it over the guy's head and it's wide open. Or Mason, or Haskins, or Aaron Rodgers, or anybody. They all make mistakes, right? At least he didn't miss it. Two school. Okay, so here's the, the here's the dealio. Now uh, down to the Chargers five yard line. Yeah, Brian had already got his meds as we took a pause. And now, well, who cares if you snap the the bottle in my ear or the can in my ear, the Red Bull? I've already been drinking the coffee, man. Uh, I don't really need it because I'm I'm pretty fired up still. First this is of, the third 20 ouncer. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. Uh your liver. <laughs> the rest of your kid liver and no, kidneys no, bladder. No, no, no. Liver. There's no sugar in this. <laughs> what are you talking about? Chase uh, Chase Claypool running the football. Uh, down down here, you're you're five yards out. You get to the two. At least he gets three yards off of this. Najee for nothing on second and, and two. Third and two, incomplete pass. They decide to go to it and whatever shovel, whatever thing that May catch teams off guard sometimes. Seemed like the more ill-advised, Ben in motion type play call, and that's uh, that one. I'm going to say is on the offensive coordinator. There's other plays here. Oh, that that yeah, that that's the, on Canada. The, it's yeah, not, that's on Flame Canada. Wait a minute, <laughs> Flame Canada. <laughs> it's it's not all on Canada sometimes because when I see Ben check no, out of sometimes. a play and then he yeah. sends you know Harris or Snell down to the far end of the field where it's like, well, does anyone even need to cover them? If you throw the ball at Benny Snell, are we? What's the catch percentage there? The probability. Yeah. So uh, some of that, I you could tell if Ben's um, calling out of it at the line of scrimmage or changing the plays. And there's a, some, there's an interesting shot at the end of that where Ben just goes, "I did what you said. I did what you said." <laughs> And that's like I don't think that's the only place it could have went because it looked like I don't know maybe Ben just isn't putting his eyes there to try and you know outsmart. It's a someone. very fast. It's a very fast play, yeah. right? And the idea is you. It's all misdirection, right? That's the whole point of that play. It's all misdirection. Correct. But Derwin James is not being fooled by that. No, he sees Fryermuth, and they've run that play a hundred million times. I knew the minute before it was wait. I, I said. Dude, I'm like screaming at the TV. Please do not run that stupid reverse shovel pass thing because it's not going to work. <laughs> it was I, like I knew that was the play that was coming. It's just it just felt like that's this is what again teams know your tendencies. This is a Steelers. That's a Matt Canada tendency. And Absolutely. it needs to get broken. Absolutely. Do something different. Kill it with fire. I would be completely okay with dumping that and the jet sweep near the goal line for eternity now. Let me I, let me talk about the jet sweeps for a second, though. I understand why they're doing that. And, and it's become, oh, yeah. as we talk about this as we go forward, because, you know, we want to get to the what really ended up, you know, biting them in the butt by the end of this game. Let's let's all come to the realization. And, and, and look, I've, I've been saying this all season long. I think feel like the offensive line has potential they're not very good right no they're just not very good and the problem is they're getting beaten in the middle of the line right they're not getting pushed they're not it makes it impossible to run up the middle so what do you do i mean you saw the lineups in that chargers game this is not a good run defensive team but when you put nine guys in the box Right up there against an offensive line that can't get pushed. Yeah. What are you going to run? You're going to well, run jet sweeps. That's what you're going to do. Here's what I was hoping would be run. Bring Zach Banner out. Where's he been? Bring out Derek Watt and at least give it a shot. At least try something there. You got tight end Zach Gentry, Pat Fryermuth. I know if you're not going to have Eric Ebron out there. And if you give this look, it doesn't mean you always have to run. You, you've got to have something in the playbook 
where maybe there's a little screen pass or the shovel goes to Derek Watt or something. Like, I, I'm looking for something a little different there. And I know we're Monday morning quarterbacking. This was a defensive line that was missing what um, – uh, Linval Joseph, um, I'm trying to think of the other name they were missing. Joseph's been out, but the other guy was just recently hurt too. And they were, they were pretty much ravaged. They were in kind of a similar position as the Steelers when it comes to who are these guys. And I was really hoping that that inexperience on their defensive line, no matter how bad we want to say the Steelers' offensive line is, might have brought up a level playing field when it comes to competition there. I get you still have Bosa that you have to contend with and, and something like that, but I at least like the attempt. The jet sweeps are also to keep stretch the field and uh, and keep guys yep. keep them honest keep them off Ben I get it I just wasn't a bi- I'm not a, the biggest fan of doing it down at, at the goal line Oh no I, I, and I agree That's... in the sense like because they proved it out right they did have the nice like at some point we're all sitting at home screaming at our TVs run the bleepity bleep ball and they did bring Derek Watt out and they did get a touchdown with Najee Harris leaping over the line. Mm-hmm. But you, where were they? At the one, right? I mean, it's like you've got to be real close. If you're at the three, does that work? I don't know. Well, okay, to two. Fine. There was a two. <laughs> it's still close. Fourth and two. Let's pit, let's do this little pitch play that could go very, it could go south real fast. Yeah. Uh, I, and I, I get you it. just. I, you got to be closer. You got to be. You got to be in the right positions to just run the ball and hope to get it, right? I like. I, I hate the play calls that they made in that first series down there, where they went. They basically, you know, had to turn turnover on downs. Yes. I don't like the play calls, but I also understand some of them. The one that we talked about with the the little shovely reverse shovel pass that was just bad. Um, <clears throat> but they they have some serious issues right now with that offensive which I don't know if we want to get into that now or not. Well, but. let's talk about the decision. I, I mean, I could talk offensive line. There's no way you're going to repair it at this point. I think the younger guys, another this year of football is a red shirt for them. It would be great if you didn't have them on the field right away, and it's it's not necessarily – I think Trey Turner has been playing better. He's probably been the Trey best. Trey Turner was okay. He's um, been the best so far on the line, followed by I, I will tell you, the, the thing that discouraged me the most in that in that from the offensive line standpoint in that game – was uh, Kendrick Green literally got his ass handed to him by a backup defensive line multiple times. It was not a good look. He was in Ben's lap often. Well, and if he bad. doesn't end up being the center next year, he will kick into the inside, and I think he yes. will be a fine player. I, I don't think he's a guy that's like, well, this is a bust. And considering what they did with the rest mm-hmm. of their draft and the way people talk – I don't like, think that at all. No, I, I would much rather all. have Najee Harris and Pat Fryermuth than Creed Humphrey. There's a lot of argument going around with idiots like uh, uh, Andrew Filipponi uh, off the fan. Well, so, come on, we already know. Consider it a source, he, right? Whatever, I, whatever he says <laughs> is probably wrong. I mean, there's there's another guy. I mean, you and I were talking about it offline. I know it's not. He's not one of the top. Uh, you know, he's on one of the uh, lower tier things. But I'm telling you right now, if that Jagoff ever writes a positive story. I'll 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 actually give him a uh, a shout oh, out. Say, oh, I know who you're talking about. We <laughs> we won't mention them by name though. Um, no, because I don't want to. I don't want to give it any credence. Uh, so but my cor- God, the invention of negatives. Yeah, the invention of negatives that he can come <sighs> up with. It's actually quite creative. But shut up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been it's been a cesspool of uh, that. And then it's talking about what quarterback the Steelers. Should, there were still seven games oh, no. left as you're publishing I'm this just, during the week. I'm trying to on. think the one the one I just saw was. Uh, you don't think of it here. I, I don't want to think. Of what, I'm not going to give you the real title, but it was it was a, along the lines of the worst nose picking jobs by uh, the Steelers this year. You know, it's just like no matter what it is, let me find oh, the worst shoe styles worn by Steelers. Everything is just ridiculous and negative, and I'm I'm so sick of him. <laughs> I, I, and, and it's the same thing with the negative. There, people are going to say the standard and this and that. And I just pointed out to you where where's what standard are you getting from these guys that have barely been with the team or they were picked up off the scrap heap? And you know there there would be some standard if you're not losing. Let's say you still have TJ and Minka out there, and you do lose somebody like Devin Bush, Terrell Edmonds, or even just Joe Hayden for that matter. I, you could overcome that because these other guys are almost they are at an elite 
level of play and you're replacing them with guys that have been journeymen practically or they're completely new or inexperienced players like Trey Norwood. Look, seventh look round this pick. Way. Two. Cam Hayward had three triple teams. He had he was being triple teamed most of that game. Not just double team, but triple team most of that game. TJ Watt plays, that can't happen. Yes. They they cannot do that, then, right? So, you know, that's that's the kind of down, you know, downstream nonsense that occurs is when when somebody of that level goes out, it just changes the dynamic completely. The fact that Stefan Tuit hasn't been around all year, and at this point, I don't know whether I think he's gonna play at all this season. Or um, ever again at this point. Maybe, I mean, yeah, at ever again. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um but the fact that, that they've been without him all is the same kind of thing. The fact that Chris Wormley has played very well, that Bugs and Carlos Davis have stepped up and played decent football at times this year. That's great, but this is not Stefan Tuitt, Tyson Alualu, and Cam Hayward as your middle three. It's no. just not. So No, and, and then uh, there was like, well, since we're on the media thing, I had a guy uh, come at me and it covers another team but he floats around on social media and whatever. And he's another one of these corporate blogger types. And he challenged, he was like, were you there to see this, whether or not it was about a DD putting out the thing with Dwayne Haskins in a cell phone. And it's like, this is what we're going to nitpick. And then she actually came, she came back at me. I'm not sure if you saw it on Twitter about her comment about the Steelers and their pressure and their not, they weren't blitzing as much this year. Well, they hadn't had to a DD. They were like fourth in the league in sacks, and I forgot where else in pressure rate, but they were like top five in a number of metrics, which is sending four guys. That's why they don't. That's why they don't that's, blitz. That's <laughs> the best of all scenarios. They don't have to blitz and still get pressure with four guys. That's what they've been doing. That's what they couldn't do consistently yesterday, mm -hmm. right? And it's why it got you know things got even more hairy because you, now you're trying to invent areas to blitz with guys who are not used to doing it. And when you with, blitz. Yeah, someone's, leave somebody someone's open. open. Yep. So and 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 <sighs> Herbert did an excellent. You got to give credit where credits due. I said Eckler's a hell of a player. I thought yeah, Herbert they, had a, Herbert was in a good game. They, they're they're fact, flawless. If you have the guys that you normally have playing, he's not running down the field for ninety yards. No, no, no. I, he might break out for one or two. He'll get there. a couple of them, but they'll they'll contain better. Uh, because again, you don't have three guys knocking Cam Hayward out of his lane so that there's a wide open lane. All right. You have guys all over the place. It's just, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to cast the bait here. I'm going to reel this back to fourth yeah. and two. We already beat the death out of the, the shovel pass, but the actual decision here to go for it and not just kick a field goal when you're down seven to three already. I think Mike Tomlin's thinking this team, the other team still has to go the whole length of the field. If they end up giving the ball back here, and if they score, the risk reward is is that I I don't know my defense doesn't get down it doesn't get in the red zone often enough. We're not a thirty point team, and the Chargers have been a team that prior over the previous four games I think was there were sub twenty points per game. They were nineteen something, so they had been too hot on offense themselves. Unfortunately, this backfires. Chargers go back down the field. Steelers had a little bit of a ray of hope. Alex Highsmith gets a sack, but then they give up right up the gut to uh, Austin Eckler. I don't know if it was up the gut or or around the edge. Uh, inconsequential point there because he had, what, four touchdowns in the game. He was trying to be yeah, Jonathan ridiculous. Taylor. So 14-3, to three, and uh, yeah, this is about where you're just like, well, what's going to go on here? But the Steelers end up uh, put, piecing together seven plays, 64 yards in just two and a half minutes, and they answer which was uh, quite surprising, uh, I want to say. So this was, in large part, once again, Deontay Johnson with uh, with a couple of catches here, including the touchdown catch. He was practically this whole drive. Uh, he was There was a missed pass with him initially, but 22 yards and a pass interference. This is the one where they put it in the window that you were talking about. And also... Um, Nine yard catch or a seven yard catch, nine yard catch, and a ten yard catch for the TD. Uh, Raked right into the end of the half. I'm like, man, they got a hold. The defense got a hold or do something because they're just not stopping anybody, and I don't think they will all it, night. I was talking to somebody on Twitter. Um, uh, I think his his handle goes something like Buttered Brains or something like that. I, don't I think know. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I there was no doubt in my mind that 
coming out of the first drive of the second half, it was going to be 24 to 10, mm. right? No doubt in my mind. I, I thought, you've given them too much time. They're going to at least get a field goal. All I wanted out of that was don't give up a touchdown. Correct. They achieved that. So that I was okay with it. I was not arguing with this guy about 24 to 10. I was like, 24 to 10 is still two touchdowns that they can find a way if something happens the right way to make up. Now, I don't feel vindicated by the fact that they came back because I didn't believe they were going to. <laughs> I'm not I'm not pretending that I thought they were going to make that kind of a comeback later in the game. I'm with you. My third quarter, I was like, well, I don't need to really get too riled up about this. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, then they, they, <laughs> they said, oh, I think our fans' heart rates are low. Let's let's do some stuff so that they all go and, and, I know. and we it's have like, the, the right hospital. I, not that I'd ever do this, but I was thinking, do I do I turn the Xbox on or something? Let's get some time in with that I'm losing <laughs> right now, then play some, put invest it into some of these games, of uh, some of my backlog. Uh, third and thirteen, though, after they come out from a halftime, they had an opportunity to go three and out, mm-hmm. and give up a thirty yard. They sure did. Uh, pitch catch bad. deal here with Keenan Allen, who Keenan Allen is a, is a hell of a player too. Uh, yes, like is. I said, you can't take it away from most of the offensive skill players that the Chargers have. The Steelers, unfortunately, then go three and out on offense, and there was the dud. It becomes even uglier. And I mean, they're making some drives to get all the way down to uh, the um, the thirteen. There's an offside on the field goal that would have been missed by Dustin Ho- Dustin Hopkins, who I failed to mention was you know another guy that's filling in or another player acquired because the Chargers have been sneak bitten with. Uh, this was mentioned during the broadcast too, if you watched by uh, Collinsworth. They just don't have kickers. They've been just brutalized with kickers over the years. But anyways, uh, just eight inches in a little forward from, uh, forward from 46 to 41, and now it's good. It's 27 to 10. We are just about done with the third quarter. The Steelers get the ball back, and you're like, okay, they're down 17. I'm just about done with this. What kind of Can we just do the pregame early so we could eat the turkey and not even have a show later this <laughs> week? That's what was on my mind. So <laughs> the Steelers drive, they get down to the four, and they settle for a field goal, Brian. It's once again, do I have to – guess what they did? They get down uh, – let me see. Um, to the to, – well, they're in the kind of quasi-red zone, so I guess. It's past, when it was past, first past. and goal from the nine – this wasn't it this, yet. This wasn't no. it yet. They were at the 18, so but there's it was nothing, still pass, pass, pass. I hate. There's nothing I hate more than first and goal from like the nine or the ten. I hate it. I always feel like there's that's going to end up as a field goal attempt. It just annoys me. Okay, we've got 14 points. The same thing you were thinking. Two possessions. I'm like, hey, so you're saying maybe whatever. And uh, the Dumb and Dumber um, gif comes out here after yeah. Miles Killebrew blocks the punt. It took a few plays. Zach Banner gets in there. This is the aforementioned. Uh, he's eligible. <laughs> Najee Harris over the pile. They get in. It took them a few tries, including the defensive pass interference that um, was intended for Chase Claypool and intercepted by Adderley. So they get in here, and now it's 27-20, and I'm pulling out uh, Jim Carrey and saying, so you're saying there's a chance. And I'm very facetious at this point because I don't think the defense could stop anything, and they do not. They give up a seven-play, 75-yard touchdown drive to go down 34-20, to and I'm just like, okay, eight minutes, uh, maybe. But somehow, some way, the Steelers run nine plays, 75 yards, under four minutes, get a touchdown pass to Eric Ebron. I didn't realize he was still on the roster at this point. And then there's an interception, two plays into the next Chargers offensive possession. I'm like, is is Justin Herbert channeling his inner Phillip Rivers? This might end up happening. And it, it, it is. It's a tie game. This is Pat Fryermuth now on the uh, on the five yard touchdown reception. You also had a roughing the passer that was in here, but just the two plays, they only had to go eleven yards. Uh, I'm just like, wow, thank you for the short fields. This looked a lot like the way that the Steelers tried to give the game away to the Bears late in that game. So when you put it into perspective there, now the defense forces another three and out. Who are these guys? I don't know. I still don't know. Something Delonte Scott. But (laughs) it's like, what college did he go to? Have no clue. But they settle. 
this is where we're at. They get down to the three, third and three. Tried to catch Deontay. Got a got a kick the field goal. They were ten, they were at the thirty four, um, and then at the uh, I'm sorry, third and three at the twenty seven, and they couldn't catch anything more. This was the series here where I get the ball at the thirty four, and I thought to myself, this is the time to run the football. But they didn't. I don't think they had Najee during this set. I think he comes back during the next one. I think he got hurt. And yeah, you have the yeah, after the four, I'm sure. Yeah. Kalen Balaj and Betty Snell. And this is where I'm like, can they chew about four minutes and just let Boswell kick it through the uprights? And they couldn't that get was, a, would have been nice, but no. Yeah. Couldn't even get a first down out of this. It was uh, ugly. There was an ugly pass that was intended for James Washington. There's Ben calling a time, burning the second time out. That was pretty critical to their efforts as well. And uh, now they're now the Steelers are up by three by some miracle of God, 27 points in the fourth quarter, and the Chargers score within three plays. <laughs> it's just oh, just uh, just such a killer. Mike Williams, former first round pick, who's really had a heck of a year. He was a little in a in a uh, a valley instead of a peak over the last few games where they weren't scoring points either, but 53 yards as we mentioned. Get some different players in the secondary, it might be different. The offensive line implodes. If you're the Chargers, you're probably going to be aggressive here against this line anyways. This Vince, is where they they figured out just put somebody over Joe Haig and you'll get to bit. It's unfortunate cuz he's more of a tackle too. So I yeah, can't even really yeah. I can't even like He's, put it on him. I mean, you know, it first you got the guy who I don't know who the hell he is, the sax man. Then you got Bosa coming up the middle causing dis- disruptions. I mean, you know, when they when it first happened, right? When you're there and they scored quick, I was like, okay, I'm okay with that. I was actually okay with that. 209 left on the clock at that point. I'm like, that's enough time. The way the offense had been playing, that's enough time. You could get down there. You could have a chance to score and take the lead again. And then the yeah, I don't know. I, like the offensive line just went. No, nope, we're tired. Screw it. <laughs> K- Kyler Fackrell, who's a journeyman, who's been on this is his third team, uh, first year with the Chargers, was with the Giants last year, and played sparingly over four years with the Packers. Uh, so, uh, ed- edge rusher there, outside linebacker. Um, just uh, that's kind of unfortunate. I thought Ben. I'm just like get rid of the ball. I can't, on the you first can't one. even say he held the ball. He had zero seconds before people were in his lap. The second on those one two plays. The second one was especially bad. I was just kind yeah. of thinking that he was too com- too comfortable. I- I'm not laying it all on him. That's just what I felt. The the third third down pass. Third and twenty nine, trying to find Deontay Johnson. Had he connected on that, that would have been a very nice play and a big yeah. gainer because Deontay would have done that same. Whoop! You get him on that diagonal line, and you aren't catching him. And then whatever the hell happened, fourth down, desperate. James Washington just was threw it pointless. at his ass. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it was, I, I just it was like whatever. It's done. Like uh, you're it's, third, it's so third sad, fourth though. and thirty two. You're not getting fourth and thirty two. It's so sad. It's that guy reaching for the balloon meme. You got like the little blue gelatin, whatever gelatinous character, and then the bigger ones kind of hugging him, pulling him away from it. That's the way I felt this game was. I, I don't know that. Yeah, I know you're 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 older, and uh, you don't do the memes. I do the memes. I just don't know that meme. <laughs> oh, we know what it is. I, I, it would pain me to even make one to put out there, but that's okay. So, looking forward, and someone made a good point. I wish I could credit whoever this was. You feel better, maybe, about the Steelers coming off this loss than you did last week in that tie. Well, you feel better. Look, I'll tell you, I felt, I felt better about the offense, and knowing that at some point they're going to get these defensive parts, hopefully, back. You know, TJ, you know, there was no major structural damage. Yes, he was sore, but you would assume, hopefully, he's back for the next game. All right, that in and of itself makes the defense better. If you can get Minka back, and, and, you know, we've talked about this all year. Minka hasn't been super outstanding, but he's he would not have let that nonsense go on with Mike Williams. All right. At least not so, for a touchdown. Maybe right. a big gain if he gets open right. there. But, yeah, we're but, talking touch 53-yard touchdown. So, um, you know, you get some of these pieces back, maybe you figure out, uh, how to get your offensive line pieced together enough 
Um, you know, the next set of games are not going to be easy games. The Bengals are not a bad team. Uh, yeah, clearly, they've beaten. They already beat us at home. They're going to go to Cincinnati and try and win. They can win those games. There's no question about it. Oh, um, the, the Browns just went down there and just beat the brakes off of them. Yeah, uh, so exactly. it's not impossible whatsoever. You can, absolutely, you just you need like you need the defense to play at at the level that they can. Uh, this is what I've said this all season long. This is just not a team that can afford mistakes, right? They are not. They are not good enough to overcome their own mistakes. So they need. It's not that they have to be perfect, but they have to play pretty flawless, pretty close, right? They're they're and and Cosworth said this as well. Their margin for error is really thin, right? Because they don't have the depth that they would like to have. They've got a mess of an offensive line right now. They've got a lot of missing pieces in a lot of different places. They just don't have a huge margin for error. Uh, but they are good enough to win these games if they can play that, if they can play within that margin of error. So they could win the next game. That would be great. They could win. They could beat the Ravens. Who couldn't beat the Ravens? The Ravens should have lost it. <laughs> well, here's my games. point. Oh my where, where people are like, oh, well, they struggled with the Lions and the Bears. So did the Ravens. Uh, the, the Browns didn't struggle with the Bears, but they, they only won by three against the Lions as well, as did the Ravens with the, the longest field goal made in NFL history that bounced uh, off the crossbar and in. The one that actually hits the crossbar, yeah. uh, you know, as opposed to the phantom one. And, uh, they can. Yeah, they can win this game. That's yeah. the, the bottom line. Well, look at Do this. I think they're going to go to Kansas City and beat the Chiefs at this point? I don't know. The Chiefs are starting yeah, to Yeah, they're figuring no, it out. I, I, I don't know if I think that. But that defense, but, that defense is suspect, but the Steelers' still. offense, I wouldn't say, is uh, with just one fourth quarter and trailing and getting pass happy is exactly within the vacuum that we would think it is, but it's certainly encouraging. I mean, this division is super tight. Baltimore 7-3. and three. Steelers, they play Cincinnati on Sunday. They're 6-4 and four with the Steelers five dropping to 5-4-1, four and one, and had the Steelers pulled this out, would have been ahead of Cincinnati, so beat them head-to-head. -head. Baltimore still has five division games left. They've only played the Bengals and lost to the Bengals. A lot of this is going to come down to the division record. Cincinnati has played three other division games already and head to their four Fourth, well, the Steelers and Browns have only played two and have four left as well. So, and it, it's a, a big lot one. Of football. You know, I, as much as we don't necessarily want to be, we got to be Brownies fans next week too. Just as long as the Steelers win, and just uh, yeah. it's just going to make it more of a log jam. But you look and see what happens there. Can, you, can you imagine that? Think of this. Listen to this. Steelers beat the Bengals. That means the Steelers are six four and one. The Bengals are six and five. So we're up on the Bengals. Uh huh. Browns. Browns beat. The Ravens. The Ravens drop to seven and four. Browns go to seven and five. Right? What a log jam in this division. I, I mean, that's just crazy. And and a lot of it will be the head to head too, because I, I think yeah. in that scenario, the Bengals would drop to the bottom because of their head to head with the Browns, and the Steelers would still have the edge on Cleveland as they do right now in third place of the division with that goofy yeah. tie and the head to head. So it's not all. I, I said this in the pregame. I would I, I wouldn't be bent on the loss. I understand it's an AFC game, but it's not a division opponent. There's still enough football. But now we're getting to the nitty-gritty, and you might need a little bit of help, but coming into all of this, the Steelers were still in a position for one of those seven uh, playoff positions. And guess what? Uh, not only are they still, but three of these teams in the AFC North, which is something we talked about in the, in the preseason, they're all in it. You know what I mean? And Cleveland's still in it, too. All four aren't going to make it, but who who the hell did the Browns sleep with to get a Week 13 buy? Uh, I don't know, man. That Jimmy Haslam's a sleazy guy. Man, <laughs> what the hell is up with that? I mean, look, this is the if they uh, the way I'm focused on this right now. They win the next two games if they can win the next two games, which they can win. They're built for division football. If they can beat the Bengals and beat the Ravens, there's a good chance they're in first place again. Or not again, because they haven't been there yet. Correct. But they still have a route to take over this division, and they could do it. 
It's and possible. We, and we still don't know. We don't know what I, – I don't like the trip to Minnesota. We still no, don't, I don't know like what that, that at all. We still Especially don't know what that just team beat Green is. Bay. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, they're talking about an erratic team, and then the Titans. <laughs> what is what going the on there? Hell, was that? And so they Houston. control their destiny. They control their oh. destiny by far. Uh, the people were asking where are all these wins or whatever on the schedule. We we're talking ten wins when this season started. It's uh, you know ten six and one might be enough to get into the playoffs. And you look and see Buffalo. The games that Buffalo has lost have not been in the best of fashion uh, this season. And they, and oh, they no. the rest of the AFC East has turned back into what they've always been, and they're allowing the Patriots back in. But Brian, I think we've chewed enough off the bone for some of this. This is some stuff to still look at. I hate looking at playoff picture. We're still not in December quite yet. I'm really not worried about the playoffs right now. No, well, no, no. It's and too, it helps too early. An extra spot. Too early for me to be worried about the playoffs. There's just so many. Everybody is like almost like 500 ball. Like there's just a lot of teams with five, six wins here in the, especially in the AFC, that just yeah. makes it hard to look into the crystal ball. And that, there's still. Who is your clear-cut favorite? I know some people will still be pulling Kansas City just because they've been there over the last few years. Well, and they are they are and looking, looking better. They they look like they've got their self. And and by the way, I don't know that Mel, Melvin Ingram has made a big impact over there. Uh, <laughs> I, I I watched the game and I forgot he was there. Exactly. So <laughs> hey, you you know you you'd had a chance to start here this week. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But Bloody I mean, boy, still, 19 whatever. points to Dallas Cowboys. I get that they have Dan Quinn, but uh, it's not exactly the greatest of defense. It was supposed to be the Cowboys offense against what was not a good Chiefs defense there, and not to be talking completely about their game, just to give you a little bit of an idea. Yeah, Melvin Ingram played uh, 44 snaps, 66% of that game, and I'm just looking up him just to further antagonize. He got a tackle. It was a combined tackle. It wasn't even solo. That's it. That's all he is on the stat sheet. Nothing else on the stat sheet there. So, uh, hope it was worth it for him. I really do. He's getting more playing time though. Got to count for something. Yep. <laughs> and you know, of course, uh, got to count for something because he's uh, presumably on a, a better team at seven and four. They have seven wins right now. So, all the power to you, man. So whatever. More than likely, I... more than likely, won't be playing football next year. <laughs> That's just my guess. But never know. He's 32. That's why I say that. But uh, anyways, anyways, Brian, we're up against it, my friend. Thanks for joining me once again. We'll uh, probably eat and belch uh, some turkey and other goodies here. Not on just, not just, on camera. Just, just turkey. But uh, we'll figure it out. We've uh, we got to say something towards the end of this week because it is the Bungles week. But we also have a holiday weekend. So we'll figure it out. Maybe we even come in a little hot and early on it. We just won't know. Some of the injury status of player or COVID list status. If we got to start dealing with this now, all of <laughs> rough Steelers catch it at the worst times, man. I'm telling you, it's like I just wish once you look at back at all the years. That's the other thing. Tomlin's done nothing with talent. This could be a, a whole other podcast, but nobody seems to remember Le'Veon Bell getting his knee taken out from his knee more than once, or Antonio Brown getting concussed. And the Steelers playing an AFC championship game with Kobe Hamilton and Jesse James and Demarcus Ayers. And did they have Sammy Coates at that point? I don't even know if he was healthy or he had the mangled hand. Uh, there's just been so many goofy things. Losing Ryan Shazier and uh, losing Ben for a whole season practically. And last year losing Dupree and Devin Bush. And it just it goes on and on and on and on. And it's like, uh, well, one injury shouldn't make. But, yeah, they start to compound and it starts to roll downhill. And that's how you end up with Taco Charlton in place of a guy making 100 mil uh, <laughs> at the same position. I mean, it's, you know, you don't back up the Brinks trucks for Taco Charlton, okay? And it's nothing against Taco, again, personally or professionally. It's just he's in a tough spot. You know what I mean? It's what can you what can you say or do about it? I just wish I just wish they could get a full roster together at some point, so you didn't have all these bumps in the road. And it's almost like uh, most of it is not even anything self inflicted. It's it's always some type of injury or some other BS. What can you do about it? There's nothing you can do about it. You're played the 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 hand you're dealt, and they somehow still tend to compete. 
It's just it, it sucks because especially last year where they were winning some of these closer games and they had that big streak undefeated and and whatnot, and then guys start going down and you, it was the same thing. You didn't have a pass rusher, you didn't have some guys in the secondary, and uh, you weren't running the football, and it was just it, it ended up being ugly. This offensive output. Albeit the Chargers not maybe the best defense in the world, but neither is the Char- neither is the Ravens, and the Browns are up and down. The Bengals are up and down, and these are division games. So if they play them close to the vest, you never know what's going to end up happening in these games. The Steelers, all these Steelers games, most of them have been one possession games, with the exception of earlier in the year, the two home games where once again injuries impacted that quite a bit, as did turnovers. So. We shall see. Uh, again, I got long-winded there. Thanks for joining me again, my friend. Happy to be here. Uh, enjoy watching the game uh, on Sunday. I'm probably going to miss the entire thing. Uh, but my you'll watch it. Co- I'll watch it. I'll, I'll record and watch it. But, yeah, uh, yeah it, I, I'm a, I'll, be, I'll know who won. It'll be like the Buckeyes game this week. I was on a mountain during the Michigan State-Ohio State game. You didn't miss and, anything. <laughs> oh, no. What are you talking about, went. man? I, I I love a blowout. I totally love a well, blowout in because that case, it's relaxing. Yes. Right? You just go, oh, it's scored again. Hey, it's great. Uh, <laughs> let me grab a pillow and a blanket and take a nap I mean, in the third what, quarter. 56 to 7? I'd love to watch that game. But not as much as I love being on the mountain that I was on. So, <laughs> I and you know what? I nearly went to that too. I was keeping an eye. It rained like all Friday. It was that cold, nasty, and I was just in that in Pittsburgh. And I'm like, God, I can't sit through that again for a college game. And you know, get up early, get there for a noon kickoff, the the big noon thing. And uh, so I passed on it. But that would have been a nice one to really enjoy because it was done. Yeah. And like it was done halfway through the first quarter. That was just ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous for those who didn't see it was a very much a blowout score of a uh, of a t- where were they ranked they were somewhere were they in the top 10 or top 15 they were somewhere in the cfp who michigan state seven yeah they michigan were seven. state was seven and we were four yeah and, uh yeah ap so, has them at two but we don't know the other results so right oh, i don't i don't care as long as they're in the i don't actually want well i do kind of want to be two because what i want at this point look i actually don't care i don't want to talk about the playoffs playoffs mm-hmm. can't talk about playoffs michigan week we it's michigan week it. Yes. Can't talk about playoffs. Michigan week. <laughs> yeah, you put the red X over everything. I hey, I still I thought we don't talk about it enough or any you know, we're Steeler centric, but don't talk enough about like Pitt sometimes and some of the other teams in the area. I mean, West Virginia isn't anything to talk about this year, but I, I, um, I can't you know I can't talk about Pitt. I don't know anything about Pitt. Kenny Pickett, that's all you gotta know about, man. <laughs> I, I, Everybody I, I thinks he's the I, next Dan Marino. So I, I don't know. But Maybe I was going to I I ask you this for the t- the two and a, or the half percenters that are left. I was going to say the two percenters, but we, we all get stuck in this situation where you got a DVR, record a game, watch it on, um, you know, delay. Uh, do you you do pay attention to the score? See, I do not. I, I try and avoid all contact oh, no. with the outside world. That's what I try and do. But you have to understand, I have an Ohio State family, right? My mother went to Ohio State. My aunt went to Ohio State. My brothers went to Ohio State. My dad, my grandpa. Like I have an Ohio State family, right? We have we have scarlet and gray in our blood, so I have people texting me the entire game, uh, telling me, disturb. "Oh, look turn what happens!" Look at, well, I can't, I can't because of work, work. You know, I can't turn it off. I gotta You're have on a phone mountain. available. What are you? What work are you gonna do on the mountain? Doesn't matter. I, I'm, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, my position is such that I have to be available, so I am, and so I, you know, I have to check, and then they'll say, "Oh, it's forty-eight. It's forty-two to nothing," and I'm like. All right, well, I don't have to worry about that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I still want to watch. Doesn't get right? the heart pumping in quite the same way, I guess. Yeah, uh, no, I, I still want to watch. So I, I come back and I wa- I sat down and I watched the first half. I didn't watch the second half of the game because why? <laughs> <laughs> There wasn't anything going on in the second half of yeah. that game. And uh, just I'll throw a plug for my alma mater. Youngstown State wins on the road for the first time since 2017. So they've had a rough go of it since making the national championship a year or two prior to that. And now they finally they, they won, and they won in a pretty convincing fashion as well. Uh, put up a lot of points, which was surprising. They have a backup quarterback who's – uh, not the best passer, but uh, they figured it out. Uh, their starter had been hurt for a few games here, and they've been moderately competitive with the second year coach. And it's really almost like first year coach because you had a spring season with the FCS instead. They they ignored everything in the fall due to COVID, so he had to 
be a first year coach in like February of this year, uh, which oh wow yeah that's it's tough. So if you hadn't followed the FCS, yeah the FCS played in the spring. Uh, well, that's the reason why Trey Lance he didn't have any football going into like the NFL draft. They didn't North Dakota did, the state didn't play. So that's. Uh, Coming from my backyard here. So hopefully a little bit of our own little personal flavor on the show. We don't annoy any of the half percenters. We know it's all Steelers, whatever. If there is something else you ever want us to talk about, we could try and dabble on it. But we've probably gone way over our allotment of time as usual. So we'll uh, put a bow on it for now. Brian's allergies have (laughs) self-corrected and we're all good Uh to go. Enjoy some. Self, enjoy some self medicate. Enjoy some <laughs> medicated yeah. themselves away. <laughs> enjoy, uh, enjoy some turkey. I'm looking at this, thinking about all the teams that lost this weekend that get to play on Thursday that we get to suffer through. Uh, I think it's Bears and Lions actually, and I'm always a Lions guy because they play at home. It's kind of their holiday. The Cowboys kind of stole it, and they're the fake corporate version of that. So I usually am against the Cowboys, and then whoever else they throw on. Uh, of course just, you are. Yeah, at least it's not. And just, it, it's, you should always be against the Cowboys. There's nothing. There's nothing positive about being for the Cowboys. That's just I, a mistake. I have, I have family that's in bad Texas. Up, that's bad upbringing, my friend. It's bad I have upbringing. Family in Texas. I have family in Texas. And it's not I my have, fault. And they're Browns. <laughs> and they're Browns fans because they're transplants. <laughs> they're not even that, Cowboys I, fans. So I, I say that one more time. That's not my fault. <laughs> uh, I get it. I get it. I understand. All right, my friend. That is a one, Mister Brian E. Roach. Uh, make it a habit to, uh, to stop by every now and then. Or, why don't you? Then these, uh, I'm these shows, you know, triple I, I am size, and then we ramble a lot more. So. Hey, uh, that's Brian. My name is Joe. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, as always, we encourage all of you out there, uh, be careful. The wishbone can be sharp. (laughs) Be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 